The last area uh, where I think um, our focus in terms of thinking about China focuses only on the negatives and miss some of the, some, some of the positives is on China's medium term growth prospects. So when we think about China's medium term growth prospects, we tend to focus on a few stumbling blocks that China faces. The working age population is shrinking. There is a middle income trap. Perhaps China won't be able to innovate and they'll stay trapped at a middle level of development. Trade wars may block China's access to global markets. Uh, and these things are true and they're real problems, uh, but China also has some very significant positives working in its favor. Uh, and these positives are so obvious that they were obvious even to Adam Smith, uh, the grandfather of modern economics, when he wrote his book, The Wealth of Nations, uh, all the way back in 1776. Um, so uh, I'm just gonna quote briefly uh, from what Adam Smith wrote about China uh, more than two, 200 years ago. Two important points. Firstly, the great extent of the empire of China the vast multitude of its inhabitants render the home market of that country of so great extent as to be alone sufficient to support very great manufactures and to admit of very considerable subdivisions of labor. So that's the first crucial point. Because China is so big, they can achieve massive economies of scale and massive efficiency gains through minute subdivision of tasks. The second crucial point from Adam Smith, by a more extensive navigation, the Chinese would naturally learn the art of using and constructing themselves all the different machines made use of in other countries, as well as the other improvements of art and industry, which are practiced in all the different parts of the world. Now, Smith was right on that as well. Um, he was also early. Uh, he was 200 years too early. But when Deng Xiaoping opened the door between China and the world in 1978, and even more when China joined the World Trade Organization in 2001, these two powerful drivers of growth came together and China had enormous scale and the capacity to learn from foreign technologies. And when you put these two things together, you have an extraordinarily powerful engine of growth. The question then becomes, has this engine run out of steam? Um, and I think the answer to that is no. Uh, and the reason I think that uh, is because of a comparison between China and Japan. Let's think about when Japan's economy fell over in 1989. Japan's GDP per capita in 1989 had already caught up to the level in the United States. Japan was already on the frontier of what was possible in terms of using technology and becoming more productive. China's GDP per capita today is very significantly below the level in the United States. And for me, that means that there is still significant catch up space. I think in the middle of this decade, it's entirely possible China will still be growing at 5% a year. I think at the end of this decade, it's entirely possible that China will still be growing at three or 4% a year.